Hi there, I'm Jim Goldstein, and welcome to the real world review of the Canon 5D Mark IV. In this segment, I'm going to be discussing the dynamic range capabilities of the camera, and I'm also going to put that in context to the dynamic range of previous Canon 5D bodies, including the Mark II and the Mark III. And let's start out really quickly by looking at a, an example photo of the Canon 5D Mark II. This is an image that was a between shot while I was photographing the stars. And in this case, it was at Bristlecone Pines. And what we have here is a tree. You can't see much of it. And even if I zoom in closely, you'll see that there's not a lot to see. Um, you might get some hints of what's there, but not a lot. And if we crank this up five stops, what you will see is the full detail of the image. Of course, in the process of doing this with this particular image, you'll see that it's uh, pretty heavily tinted red. What you'll see with this is that there's a lot of luminance noise, and you'll also see that there's a lot of color noise. What? One of the things I want to make sure we have a good baseline on as we go through this video is that when I'm referring to digital noise, there are two types. There is um, luminance noise, and there is chroma noise. And luminance noise manifests itself as random light and dark spots reminiscent of grain and you can see that a lot in this example where i've really cranked things up and you can see it in these dark areas of the night sky um, where you see it looks like these uh, light and dark speckles and i'm not talking about the stars i'm actually talking about um it's kind of hard to see here but if you look in this area right here you can actually see it's it's dark sky but there's little speckles here and there um, that is kind of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the luminance noise. As far as chroma noise um, or color noise, which I refer to it as because it's just easier to remember that way, if we look at this example where I overcrank this image, in the shadows you can see that there are these speckles of uh, green, uh, red, purple, or blue, and that is uh, the, the chroma noise or color noise. It's basically random coloration um, and it often appears very unnaturally. So these are the two types of uh, noise that I'll be referring to. I think it's really important to, to know that digital noise results when an image sensor has difficulty discerning wanted electronic signals. Um, <clears throat> I covered this in my ISO uh, performance video as well, that the unwanted electronic signals um, used to reproduce the image uh, is created from random background electronic signals. And digital noise patterns vary from image to image and are most clearly seen in mid-tones and shadows where less intense light signals are being registered on the camera sensor. Digital noise can appear fine or coarse depending on the magnitude and frequency of the noise signal in an image. Um, I think for the Canon 5D4, the uh, advent of the on-chip on analog to digital conversion is improving the performance in these areas considerably. Um, you can get a lot more out of um, your image at higher ISO settings <clears throat> with um, with the new uh, Canon 5D4 uh, thanks to the ADC. Um, you couldn't necessarily get the same results at the same ISO in these older generation 5D bodies. You can see detail pretty easily, but you also start to see at this extreme correction in post-production, starting to get some lines and some texture and patterns to the overall image. Of course, you can see a lot more of the Milky Way and you can see a lot more of the tree, but the net result overall is still pretty extreme. It's a pretty, it's, it's a pretty strong negative here. And if you compare the two really fast, you can see how this is pretty much like a night and day uh, situation. Now, if I go back and I say, okay, let's go to the next generation of camera. This is uh, between uh, sequence shots of um, star trails at a, a location where there are some petroglyphs. And you can't see the petroglyphs because the foreground is so underexposed. But again, if you crank this up five stops, you'll see that you can get the detail in the front you're going to get a lot of the color noise and a lot of the luminance noise as well. Um, and equally, 
to the 5D2, you're pulling out more detail. There seems to be a great deal of dynamic range that you can have, um, but they each have their own characteristics in terms of what is uh, wrong with the image as a result of the sensor technology uh, from generation to generation. If we jump to the 5D4, let's go to this one, which is really severely underexposed, far more underexposed than um, the previous images uh, at f8 iso 100 and a 2.1 second exposure uh, well after sunset it looks pretty much dark you might be able to see some hints of the sky in the upper portion of the image but if we crank this up five stops it looks like a very good image with the exception that you're starting to see far more defined uh, patterns and lines in the image when you crank your image up five stops. If you zoom in just like with the 5D2 and the 5D4, excuse me, the 5D2 and the 5D3, you are seeing luminance noise, you are seeing color noise, but it's not nearly as pronounced. Um, that in itself is great, but the downside here is that you're seeing these these lines, these patterns. So even though the Canon 5D4 has the capability to pull out so much detail out of the shadows, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you want to do. What's gonna be more important to you is noting where the sweet spot is in terms of the performance of the ISO sensitivity. Um, given the new ISO, ex the, the new expanded ISO range of the Canon 5D Mark IV, I would spend more attention to that. And this is more eye candy in terms of what you can and cannot do with um, pulling out detail of the shadows. Of course, when you go to a more realistic image, let's go to, the, to this one, where it, it does look underexposed. I would like to salvage this image. I would like to be able to do a little bit more with it. If I go ahead and expose this uh, almost two and a quarter stops beyond what the exposure initially was, it looks really good. If I zoom in, there is some color noise, but there's also luminance noise, which you would expect, but it's not anywhere near to the degree that we see when we crank things up five stops. Um, and this is a longer exposure, so the detail in the foreground is gonna be blurred and soft. But if you're in another situation where you are in low light and you underexpose a faster exposure, you certainly should be able to pull out detail and have a very sharp image. One thing that I think is important to note as I'm going through these images is that um, you're not going to want to crank every image just because you can. Um, in this particular example, though this particular photo was taken with an ISO setting of 160, um, it's actually showing um, a, a, an ISO uh, invariance test. Now, what is ISO invariance? It's when you use a lower base ISO setting that is known to perform well in regard to noise, even at the cost of underexposing your image. And that is this in... Uh, case in point, then relying on Lightroom or an equivalent to adjust the exposure in post. And so that's what I've done here, where I've upped the exposure in post-production by about two and a quarter stops. So what, what's happening here is that these tests are looking at the ISO invariance by pushing the image five stops, revealing the noise, uh, both chroma and luminance. And at the lower ISOs, you'll experience less noise, but noise nonetheless. And we, we do see that when you zoom in to the uh, the, the corrected image, you, you still see some, but it's not uh, grotesque in any way, and it's not a distraction. Um, the characteristic to note when pushing an image to these extremes, though, is not only the amount of noise, but the larger patterns of noise across the image. And that's what I was highlighting with this other truly extreme example where you see these streaks running through, because that's showing a larger pattern of noise that is uh, too distracting to make the image worthwhile in using. Now, while it's nice to use cameras with good ISO variance performance, it's still a best practice to push your images less in post where you can where you can, and just get the exposure right in camera. Hey, but we're all human and we like to push limits and from time to time, um, and having a camera that's capable of um, great ISO invariance uh, where you can really push things um, is one of the reasons why we look at these videos and we want to see how good the, the camera is because you never know when you're going to need to use it. And um, of course, that is why we love to see how far we can recover shadows in our images.
So what I like about the 5D4 is that the sensor technology is improving if we go from one extreme to the other, the 5D2 to the 5D3 to the 5D4. Um, they each have their flaws, but they each have the ability to do something um, well beyond the the capabilities of what the sensor is supposed to be doing on an average basis. Um, but if you're in a bind, I would say the Canon 5D4 uh, definitely has the capability to do something far more streamlined, far more efficiently, and with less um, artifacts, um, except when you get to these really extreme situations. This one I overexposed almost three stops, and it looks really good in terms of um, the artifacts that you would normally see in the color gradation, you don't see tons of noise that would uh, keep you from wanting to do something with this image. Of course, when you get to the shadows, you see some of the color noise, um, and in the darker areas, you see some, but it's it's much more manageable at, at this point. And I think that you can pull out a lot more detail with the 5D4 than you could with the previous generations, which is great. But again, balance that with your uh, understanding of what range, what ISO range your camera best performs at. And if you pay attention to that as much, if not more so than what you can crank out of your image from the shadows, you should be able to produce some really stellar images. And like I said before, when I started, these images are extreme examples. This is not what I was looking to accomplish when I went out to photograph this particular image. This is the type of shot that I was looking to capture. So you want to expose correctly. You want to do um, the right exposure for the right situation, for the right lighting, for the right uh, circumstances to get what you want. But if you're testing and you want to see the extremes, then this video should show you exactly what's capable when you're looking at the 5D3, the 5D2, and now the 5D4. And like I said, these much more realistic examples of being able to salvage an image are uh, should be uh, music to your ears if you've been waiting for the Canon 5D Mark IV for a long time. And I, I feel strongly that the camera is performing as good as you possibly can expect um, given the latest technology that's out there. I think Canon is doing a great job. This Canon sensor is performing extremely well, but have grounded realistic expectations of what you're going to get out of the dynamic range capabilities and potential of the camera. All right. Thank you very much for uh, watching the video. If you have questions, leave comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for all things photo. And if you have questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Again, thanks. I also want to extend a thank you to LensRentals.com for making this test possible. They made a Canon 5D Mark IV available to me on very short notice and with great flexibility, great service, great gear, and uh, I really appreciate their support. If you haven't already, check out some of my other real-world review tests of the Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, in addition to the dynamic range test, I also have a video featuring a test on the ISO sensitivity and range of the camera. I also have some pretty extreme exposure tests to highlight how well and how or bad the uh, color noise and luminance noise is for very long exposures at different temperatures. And I wanted, wanted to highlight and see how the sensor technology has improved so check that out. That should be really interesting. I also have an example video of how you can use the dual pixel raw files with DPP to make micro adjustments. Check them out. And thanks for your time and watching my videos.